All right, so uh, we're going to get together to talk about uh, logging today. So welcome to another Mycroft Soundbites, and I'm Stratus. I'm Gez. And uh, we're just going to jump right in here because I don't think uh, many people need much introduction to logging and why we're going to do it. So we're just going to jump right into the command line today. Let's do it. All right, we're, we've got our terminal up and we are already, it looks like we're already in the ice cream shop skill directory. So let's jump into the init file where our skill is defined. Here we have, as you can see, the, the very basic uh, ice cream shop skill that, we, that we've created in, in previous videos. Um, uh, but what we wanna do today is, is look at this logging and um, you know, how can we use logging to um, A, better understand what our skill is doing um, and B, so that we can let users know what's going on um, particularly, you know, if something hasn't gone perfectly to plan. So, um, so maybe to, to, to give them the easiest possible example, let's, um, let's use the initialize method. So we'll add a new method. Um, and if you, if you're pretty new to skill development, um, uh, just as a, a quick primer, the init file, um, it's, uh, sorry, the init method is going to get called as the skill is being constructed, whereas initialize uh, will wait until the skill has has completely um, uh, completely initialized, and, and then this will run before the rest of the skill. Uh, so this is a good place for if you are doing anything with skill settings, uh, then you want to do that in here, um, or anything with uh, intent intent handlers or um, anything that needs to interact with other things inside your skill. Such as login here. credentials, for example, if you're connecting to an outside, um, I don't know, for example, if you're making, if your skill makes a call against an API that has authentication behind it, you might set up your um, authentication handlers here. Yeah, perfect example. Yeah. Um, anyway, but so it also, because it runs when the, the skill first loads, it's a good place for us to, to see um, this logging in action. So, uh, so let's do an info level log. So the, the logger, um, it's, it's just, you know, a regular Python logger, um, but it's available on the Microsoft skill class. So we can say self dot log dot info, um, or you know, dot the, the level of logging that we want. Um, and so here we can say that the skill has loaded. Beautiful. Uh, and so if we save that um, and we jump over to the Microsoft CLI, we should see, uh, yeah, about halfway up, ice cream shop, the skill has loaded, huzzah, great. Um, so there, we can see that it's working. We can see the hot reloading uh, is obviously working because, you know, we saved the file and, and Microsoft reloaded the skill. Um, and here we've got, you know, our first bit of, text coming from our skill uh, and showing in the logs. Uh, so it'll, it'll show up here in the log output and it'll also be in the, in the, um, in the skills.log uh, in our file system. Um, sorry, I don't understand. sorry about that, Mycroft. Uh, so what is it that's getting logged here? So if we, if we look at this line, you know, bit by bit, we can see that it starts with a timestamp um, of, of when it was generated. It's got a level. So in this case, we did self.log.info. So it's an info level log. Um, the, then there's the process ID. Um, most of the time you probably won't care about that, um, but it, it could be useful if you're doing some, some low, low, low level uh, checking. Um, then we have the class of the skill that's emitting the log. So you'll see that that matches our class name. And then we've got the text and that's it. So um, for those of us that are old school that are just used to uh, making print statements, why would you want to use 
the logging over print or vice versa is, is print still a valid thing to use inside of your skill for debugging purposes yes print print is completely valid to use while you're doing development um it's not something you should be leaving in there when you distribute that more broadly um but you can absolutely just use print when you're doing your own development purposes um you know, for something like Mycroft, uh, print very quickly, you know, uh, becomes, <laughs> isn't, isn't uh, useful because, you know, as you can see, like there's a lot of different stuff that's going on. There's a lot of different systems that are all um, interacting to make Mycroft do what it does. And so we really need to have an understanding of, of what's generating all of these messages um, and, you know, where they're coming from and, and when they happened and, uh, and all of that sort of thing. So, um, can I show you an yeah. example of why I, I asked the question? Yeah, totally. So when I do things, I will actually do something like this, um, and then have my message here. Mm. Right. And the reason for this is because when I'm watching this to me, when I'm scanning for, when I'm scanning this, right assume that I didn't catch this or there's a lot of output that's happening or, you know, it doesn't happen in the initialize function. I'm looking for something. And because the text is all purple or, you know, if you're like, you're looking through the log, it's way easier in my mind to have something that, that is unlikely to be omitted by anything else in order mm -hmm. to like scan through it. Like if I scan through this, this caused like, there's just a ton of white space here to the end where everything else had like this, the text wraps around and so um it's for sure it's something that i do but i always always like well should i be doing that i don't know I, I obviously remove it when uh when i'm done with it but yeah it's something that i you know i've seen i'm, I'm pretty sure i've seen everyone you know employees and and in the community um regularly using that uh, for their own development so it's it's totally fine to do that um uh but yeah, it's just best to, to well, we, we definitely want to pull that out before it gets, you know, submitted to the marketplace or anything. Um, but we can also have a look uh, a little bit later at how we can make it a bit easier to see our logs, um, mm. you know, as apart from everything else. Um, but for now, we've, we've got an info level log. Um, and if, uh, if you're familiar at all with the, with, you know, Python's normal logging uh, uh, class, then um then you'll know that there's some you know there are a series of levels um, or types of, of logging um so here we've got an info level that's just going to describe the normal behavior so it should be that you know things are operating as expected um, but for some reason we want to provide um, some information uh, to to the user or, or more so to someone who's, who's looking at, you know, what's the system doing and why is it doing it? Um, if there was, uh, um, something that, you know, the next level up is, is a warning. So we can go self.log.warning. Um, and this would generally be used. Is it if, warning or warn? Uh, warning, I believe. So this would be used if, you know, the skill is able to continue, um, but perhaps, you know, uh, you have a method in your skill um, that you've exposed via the skill API, uh, but you're now deprecating that and, and changing it slightly or something like that. Um, so it's it's not, you know, a critical error or anything like that, but but it's something that you want to you wanna warn people about. Um, and so, so we can use warning. So there you can see the uh, the warning that we just omitted there. Yeah, um, and so then the next the next sort of level is an error. So that's you know if something's actually um, you know it's a it's more of a serious problem. Um, we've been out, unable to perform some kind of function. Um, so then we can do self log error. Exactly. And here we, you know, we can see it's it's in bright red because it's it's clearly something that's really gone wrong. Um, 
I do want to change warning to be a little bit more obvious, but um, it's just normal for now. Uh, so that's an error. Um, and then the next one would be an exception. So that's where, uh, you know, particularly when we're actually catching an exception, um, it's, it is a type of, it's actually a subtype of the error log, um, but it provides, you know, uh, the standard stack trace um, alongside that message so that you don't just sort of tell people something's broken. You can actually point to them, you know, here and here's where it is broken. Um, but you can see at the moment uh, we get none type none um, because it hasn't received a stack trace. So let's generate and get an actual error in our skill. Um, we could do something like, uh, let's just try and access a variable that we haven't, haven't defined. Perfect. Awesome. Great, that is much more helpful. So not only do we do we see that the the code broke, but we can actually see, you know, what type of uh, exception it was that we, we got a name error um, and exactly where it happened. So it's on line twelve of, of a nit.py. So much more helpful for you as a developer. Much more helpful for your users, um, or if people are you know uh, coming to us for support, um, it also helps us to track down what's going on. Uh, so that's an exception, and then no. the next level. I was going to oh, yeah. ask. Um, it normally I would have thought that it would go to critical. Does does Mycroft make use of the critical logging function? You can you can do critical. Um, so critical, I haven't actually. To be honest, I haven't seen many people use it, um, or anyone use it that I can think of. But I mean, I generally think of critical as uh, things are so broken that the skill cannot continue. Um, so, um, but yeah, we can, we can put one of those in here as well. Um, so the same thing, you can just do self.log.critical. Um, goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, I think you might need one more space at the start. Oh. Uh, no, nope, because I put it outside. Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, Python, you lovable scamp. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, cool, critical. Um, but again, we, we need to update the, the coloring on that so that it, you know, it doesn't just fall into the background. Um, but yeah, so you can do a critical, uh, a critical message. Um, so there's, there's what, five, uh, types of logs. Um, and there's one more. Um, so these are the ones that you're generally going to be using, particularly during development. Um, but, um, particularly if you, if you, you know, if you're watching logs and you're seeing, you know, huge amounts of logs go past, um, you probably realize that you don't end users don't really need to know, you know, absolutely everything that's going on in your skill. Um, there's a lot of information that is only really helpful while we're debugging. And so that's when we use the self.log.debug level. Um, yeah. We don't normally need it for everyday usage, um, but it could be useful at some point. Um, and if we jump back to the CLI, we will see that it is not there. It doesn't show up because by default, Mycroft doesn't log the debug level messages um, because there's just there's so much of them uh, that it, it would be a bit silly. Um, we can turn them on though. Uh, if we if we use a, a a colon command in here, we can say log level debug. Uh, I think we might need. Oh no, that worked great. Um, and then if we reloaded the skill, um, if we go back and and hit save again, we'll... yep. Lots of fun stuff. Yeah. So 
Yeah, there, there we we saw for a brief moment that there was the <laughs> that there was our debug message, um, and Somewhere. now we're getting a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and so this is why we don't don't have debug on um, by default, um, but we can turn it on uh, and, and it'll be in our, our log files as well. Um, this highlights, you know, part of that problem that we were talking about before around why people might want to use print statements because, you know, there's so much going on here that like, how do we, how can we possibly, you know, keep track of, of what our skill is doing? Um, and here's where some of the other command, uh, colon commands, uh, come in. So, uh, let's do colon help for a second, just so we can, we can see what's available to us. Uh, if we look at. I think it's on the next page. Yeah, here we go. Um, so we've got got some filter and find uh, commands available. So there's there's also that log level there, um, but filter and find are the things that that we're interested in. So filtering the log is going to remove remove logs that match that string, um, and then we can we can add and remove those filters or clear and reset them and, and show what filters exist. Um, but probably a, a more useful one if, you, if you're developing a skill is the find command. So if we do, if we go back, uh, hit any key to continue and we do colon find um, and we'll use the, the class name because that's quite unique. So we can say ice cream with a capital I Boom. And there we have only our logs for our skill. Um, so this is this is now much easier to see, you know, what our skill is doing and and um you know without without being bothered by just endless amounts of text to speech and audio service and um you know enclosure code and you know all, all the other things that are that are doing their logging for for important reasons but we can just ignore them for a second and just focus in on on our skill um so it's a really really useful powerful feature as a developer um and does that only last as long as your instance of the cli is open uh this is only operating on the cli so so the the log file will continue to be receiving logs from everything. Um, this is only changing what is displayed here in this window. Right. So if I exited and came back, I'd have to reset up the find. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, cool. So I think that's mostly it. Um, oh, one other one other thing is that um, so far we've been using the logger that's available on the Minecraft skill class, um, which is going to work, you know, particularly for simple skills, going to going to work most of the time. Um, but what if we have uh, a function that's that's outside of our skill, um, be, you know, because it's, uh, you know, we, we just have a pure function, it doesn't need to have any um, any access to anything in the skill. Um, so we we might go above the the class and just do a, a random little function. Yep. Um, and so we've got this function, but we also, sometimes we want to log from that as well, right? And so obviously we can't do self.log because self in this instance is, is the function rather than, rather than the Mycroft skill class. Um, but we can import the logger from Mycroft.util. So if we, if we jump up above into our import area, Mycroft.util, um, Oh, sorry. We can do from from Microsoft.util. Might be might be easier. Uh, and then at the end, import all caps log. That's it. Um, and so now in our new function, um, we can use it in the same way that we do everything else. Um, and so to make that show up, we'll just need to call new function from our from our skill because currently the, the code's not executed anyway. Uh, 
All right. So uh, before we do this, uh, we, we probably want to turn off um, that debug logging just so we can clean this up a little bit. Um, and now let's go and, and trigger our skill so that we'll see this log message show up. There it is there. It tells you the function. And then I assume, is this the line number? Yep, that's yeah. the line number. Yeah. Um, but because it hasn't come from the ice cream shop class, uh, it's it's showing that it's, it's still come from the skill, but it hasn't come from the ice cream shop class. So, um, so that's why it wouldn't show up with our uh, with our find um, applied, uh, because we we had the the find applied very specifically to the ice cream shop class name. Um, but you know we could we could we could do a find um, ice cream for example, and then uh, that should or at least find ce cream. Would, would certainly work um, to show both of those. Perfect. Great. So that's logging. Anything else complex that you want to talk about, or is it pretty much just that straightforward? It really is that straightforward. Um, you know, uh, I think when to use the different levels of logs um, is always slightly debated um, by different developers uh you know we try and tr try and provide some guidance but in the end it's, it's really up to you um you know if if there is a skill that's being uh submitted to the marketplace and it's full of print statements then then we're going to ask you to remove those um if you log info level messages you know 50 times a second, then we're going to ask you to remove those, um, or at least at least change them to debug, you know, just so that it doesn't fill up a device's uh, log files with with mess messages. But uh, but mostly, yeah, th that's that's all you need to know. Um, and then you can use these to um, to either yeah report when things are going wrong, or just help to understand you know what's going on in your skill at, at different points in time. All right, so that was logging. Um, it takes a little bit longer to explain logging, even though we didn't do a whole lot of coding today. It was mostly just, you know, here's what the log level is and here's what it looks like on the CLI. And, you know, we just kind of walked through that process. So it was, it, I think it was pretty straightforward, but, you know, you can always come and find us or members of the community on the, the, the chat.mycroft.ai. Um, we're always around to help. And I do kind of scour the messages on, YouTube if we ever get left. And I know that Chris does as well. So you can also ask questions there and we can um, attempt to help you out or at least direct you to the documentation. But uh, with that, Chris, is there anything else you want to talk about here? No, no, I think that's it. I think next time we'll uh, we'll start getting into how we can um, make Minecraft talk and, and uh, start to do some cool stuff in our skill. So good, good. Then until next time. Until next time. Adios. Ciao.